differences. It is just political. Mr. Lefo, do you have anything to add to the budget? Well, um, Michael, you sound very much like a pepper with everybody. Um, <laughs> because uh, just about everything that he said, uh, you know, we definitely stand for um, really and truly uh, there was not any real substance within the budget in itself. There was not even any indication of uh, budgets from the past and uh, where the goals were set if it was met um, and reasoning why it was not met and uh, the goals that were met, for example, and what benefit did the population get as a citizenry. Um, as far as we believe uh, within the Progressive Empowerment Party, it was basically a show. It was just numbers being thrown around. Uh, there was truly no true substance towards what was being placed into the public space. Uh, because again, uh, with diversification of uh, our economy, um, you know, what much was said where that is concerned? How did we set real goals for on a national level? Um, and again, where the citizenry can know for a fact what a benefit will be gained by them. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was just basically a show. Um, the budget was totally sad. It, it, you know, uh, to know that we're spending the type of monies that we're spending as a nation and uh, at the end of every fiscal year not having really much to, to, to show for it. Uh, really and truly, what are we doing with this money? Where is the accounting? Where is the transparency? Uh, uh, where monies are being uh, spent within our budgets? Uh, you know, you are coming into Parliament, you are talking to the population. In fact, a budget should not even be a couple hours long. It should be a few days because you have 41 constituencies. You should be detailed as in what are the needs of the different constituencies, uh, the processes that's putting in place in, in, uh, on, a, on a national level mm -hmm. uh, where every constituency is concerned um, as far as the benefit that they would gain from that. And at the end of it all, of your fiscal year, you're having a new budget coming into play. Um, did we address or bring into the public space what was spent from the last budget? How did that money benefit the citizenry and the, and the respected constituencies and so on? Um, so really and truly the budget, as far as I see it personally, was failure. <laughs> Total failure. I don't think that the population got anything of substance, really. It was numbers being thrown around. They were talking about raising the minimum wage of uh, $2.50. But in reality, I mean, our cost of living is, is still high. Uh, uh, you know, you have many, many parts of society and uh, uh, within uh, the public sector that is totally broken. It, it needs to be fixed. There's a lot of things that need to be addressed. And no one is talking about this. We are just taking money and throwing it in places that, again, we are not seeing the positive results for this. Um, that's a problem. Okay. Mr. Garcia, your input on the budget. Were you satisfied? What were you pleased with? What were you not happy with? All budgets are good in this intention. Right. Uh, what you will have is how do you Im implement what you intend to do? And uh, where Mr. Defu and myself separate ways is that government will come and put a proposal to the country this is the amount of money we intend to spend on, on different departments education health national security and so on the thing that the challenge for every government from time immemorial is to get the public servants to work Yes, where the, 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 the crux of the matter is. Yes, I could throw figures up in here. Yes, I agree with that. We, every budget we throw nice figures up in here. Mm -hmm. Some are salacious, some are um, is to captivate the, elector, the, the, the voting population. We understand all these things in the politics. But who is to implement what? And if we don't change the structure of our governance from the, from the public service, from the public sector behavior in terms of our governance, then go, political organization will come hold office and go until we change the behavior of the public service. I'm not saying that the public servants are not good people, but their work ethic has to change. Their attitude towards the, 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 the wider fabric of the society has to change. Mm -hmm. um, I was in some agreement when the prime minister said that <clears throat> there are public officers who come to work produce absolutely nothing, 
and make the lo loudest noise when the pay is, is late. Um, how he so said it. How he said it. No, I don't know. I, I, it came across a little too crass and raw. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, let's face facts. We we sit in here at this panel. We have all have years of complaint of going into government offices and not getting proper service. And there where our problem lies in Chanda Bego and Mr. Defoe, if he wants to, from his from his political organization, Pep wants to make a difference to capture the, the imagination of the wider population. Mm -hmm. They have to, once cut down in their policy, how they are going to address these issues. Right. Yes. Anthony, if I could just jump to that question one time, you know, what strategies do you all have in place for public servants? Well, really and truly, um, where pub the public servants are concerned, we know that there must be a, a, a extreme evolution um, as to how business is done, mm -hmm. period. Uh, because when you look at models outside of Trinidad and Tobago, that actually work. Again, uh, we have been studying the refabrication of Trinidad. We call it uh, rebooting the republic. Mm -hmm. We literally want to switch everything off and put it back on, as if we just got an independence. Um, to create a model, really, that can allow for a seamless transition, number one, from the state that we're in presently into a new evolved state, as well as um, now, again, you take a normal Trinidadian that's on the ground here right now, put him, on, put him on Caribbean Airlines, send him to any first world country, whether it be the US, Canada, or, or England for that matter, or Europe, uh, they are able to assimilate themselves to the new systems that they are now incurring, that they are now being exposed to. And uh, there's not much shift or, or change for themselves that allows that to actually happen. The point of the matter is, is that they are able to, to make that change for themselves, willingly, and the point is, is that if we're able to create a blueprint that would allow for our public sector, one, to be much more efficient, two, have a proper level of accountability and transparency, because that's a large part of what we are dealing with on the ground here, where we do have the levels of inefficiency that we deal with in the public sector. Because again, the accountability and transparency is almost non-existent. You have workers within these uh, 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 public arms that are basically doing what they want to do, how they want to do it. And again, there's, there's no one answering for anything. Um, and case point, I've gone to legal affairs in recent time. It took me almost half a day to get my business done. And uh, this was just a document that had to be retrieved. Mm -hmm. And again, my question was, why is there such a high level of inefficiency? And again, the system in itself is what's flawed and it's something that we've been practicing for the last 57 years. So everybody thinks it's business as usual, it's okay, and that's just the way it's done. But in reality, it's not because you know that when we go to a first world country where the systems do work and there is a level of accountability and transparency, again, you find that efficiency there. You go into any public office and you are in there five minutes in and out. Uh, why are we not able to enjoy that said thing right here in Trinidad and Tobago? You know, you would have people across the board in different areas uh, uh, within different organizations and so on that may even try to defend um, our way of life that we live here in Trinidad and Tobago. But again, it's just a matter of bringing the actual change. And it's not to, to, to bring it on to the population where it's at a shock factor. Because again, it's about educating the population. It's about putting information for people to understand in layman terms. Uh, because unfortunately, we do have a population that um, I have to say, uh, 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 in my own terms, uh, uh, somewhat brainwashed of sorts, um, uh, as far as how they think and the way that... Uh, but, but, but Michael, how, but, but Anthony, how do you get them to unlearn, to relearn? Well, again, it's, if you're it's saying about, that they are brainwashed, mm. how do you get people who are brainwashed to unlearn, to relearn? But may, uh, I, may I make a yes, sure mention here? Because, you see, again, uh, we inherit a culture we inherit a public service. And the same culture that we inherit, we continue. And I want to ask a question openly today. Is the minister's public servants? Mm. I will ask it again. Is the minister's yes, they public are. servants? Yes, they, they are. are. Are we satisfied because they are the leaders? Are we satisfied that the leaders are doing what they're supposed to do? No. Now, right, and the point that I'm making, which is uh, something that I've learned in my journey in this life, is that there is no bad workers. There are bad leaders 
Where is the leadership to take us to that level? Is it necessary to have the level of bureaucracy that you are talking about so that corruption will flourish? Why haven't we put in place systems all right, that speaks to using the technology of the computer <coughs> to increase our productivity and to make work easy. I will tell you something. It took us almost 10 years to do the Asakura Customs computerized system. While in Jamaica, it took less than a year, and in Barbados, about six months. So I ask the question, why that is so? I will go further to ask a question. I've been to Singapore. It's the very same public servants who are driving the um, government agenda. So why they are uh, able to do it? And I will ask my final question. The very said public servant, if you take him out from Trinidad and Tobago and you send him in the United States, the next day he is producing. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Yeah. You see, we need to ask the fundamental questions that is necessary. And I agree, you know, we need to change the culture. But the culture is not specific to public servants. I just go in banks. Right? And you have a payday, and you have two tellers and the rest gone on, the, um, gone on um, lunch, and you have a long, long line. I will go to stores, and if you walk there, and you stand up and you say, let me see this piece of cloth, look, let me see that. If you ask for a third, look at that cloth, you're buying or you ain't buying. But if you go in the United States, you could ask for 15 pieces of cloth, and they will say thank you if you ain't buy and, and then move on. Right? And there's a reality that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. The, 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 the issue of make work, of the CPEP, and all these issues are fundamental to us. And I'm saying that the cultural change you, um, needs to start at the leadership. Because our country falls or rise based on their leadership. And every country in this world who would have done good is because there was a vision and there was a commitment by the leadership to ask for all the things that we ask for. Procurement. Let us, let us um, look at that. Let us look at, at what happens on the sea bridge under um, Minister Sinina, and he hasn't been held accountable. Let us ask the question, what was the cause for taxpayers? All right, because it's not government money. When a government decided to move a vessel, and they were advised by everybody, allow the vessel 18 months, and the minister said, I could get a vessel in the morning. What is the cost to Trinidad and Tobago? Who is being held accountable? Who? They fired two senior um, managers, right, without a trial, and they castigate the union and the management to make it appear that the fault is our fault. And these are the realities that we have existing in Trinidad and Tobago. And from where I sit, until we are brutally frank, and until we are able okay, to face those realities, we wouldn't get anywhere. How do you justify selections are boards? When selections are board, it's based on who is my friend, or who is a campaign manager, or who does play golf with me, right? Not not the question of the ability of the people. How do we continue in our country to divide our country, given our small population on the basis of race, on the basis of political parties, and not what the individual brings to the table? And that continues to be a perennial problem in Trinidad and Tobago, and we do not want to speak about that. We sweep it under the carpet. And until we face those realities, Trinidad and Tobago, next 20 years, next 30 years, we're going to be talking the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, that's a, and, and, and my question again is, how do you get a society to unlearn, to relearn? Because we definitely need fundamental and radical change in the, in the way we think and in the way we do business. Where do we go with, with that? How do we get the whole fabric of the society to change its whole behavioral pattern towards Trinidad and Tobago? Well, again, Michael said a, 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 made a great point. We have to start from leadership. We have to start from the top because this is where the example lies. When you have a wider part of the population that's seeing people who is on top 
getting away with all types of misbehavior in public office. What does it leave for the regular citizen okay, on the ground? And, okay, I agree with that. I have no, no, no objection to that. But in 1986, we didn't want to accept change. We nearly killed him for it. Let's be practical because we want to be frank, brutally honest here. 1986, Robinson decided to bring, to remove the old way of doing things and bring in some fresh way of doing things to get Trinidad and Tobago and an even keel, and they almost killed him. Yeah, but you also know there was a lot of underlying dynamics taking place within that era, within that, that initiative in trying to bring that. But wasn't change. that the right time? Wasn't that the right time? to start to effect the change that would have been in place now so that we could have been getting more efficient and better service throughout our the, the, throughout our Trent Tobago. Wasn't if, that the right if time? If it was the right time, I don't know if I will say if it was the right time. I would say that the time was good. You you know, any time is the right time. It's better late than never. Because mm -hmm. the point is, is that at this stage we are doing this fifty seven years. And we are talking about 11 administrations passing through the, the doors of the parliament. We are talking about people who are talking that they have degrees, they have masters, leaders is what they're calling themselves. Yet, how many of these people have actually led our country into, into prosperity? How many of these people have brought our national uh, 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 citizenry having a level of hope and opportunity? We almost don't have a middle class. Why? Because it said middle class is leaving the shores, looking at other countries to be second class citizens, looking for that hope and opportunity. Why are we not able to provide that here? We had a discussion before the show actually started and we, we, you know, we said the PNM has had political, social, economic reign on this country since our independence. They have had their leaders that passed through the, sh the doors of the parliament. What have they done directly for the citizenry of Trinidad and well, Tobago? Well, as you touch on the PNM there now, okay, so let's, let's start dissecting from 56 to now. And I, will, oh, I have always said, should the PNM have done more? Yes. yes. Could the PNM have done more? Yes. yes. Should the PNM have done things differently? Yes. But it is not just the PNM alone is responsible. The behavior of a society. We at times we need to take responsibility for our own actions. Because let me ask you a question, you know. Goes to Brother Michael also and to you. When you come out your house and you drive in your car and you take a drink of water and you fling the bottle through the window on the road. Who's to blame for that? The citizen. Huh? So therefore, why at times we are not taking responsibility for our own actions and or because in your own right you are your own leader also, you know. Ah, like I in say your that. own right you are also your own leader. <laughs> so, and there are certain responsibilities that you have to take to think. Now from a from a from a governance structure, yes, the upper, the prime minister is responsible. For where the country go, wherever the prime minister go, the country goes. We, we know that. We wouldn't even go as high. You were talking about a citizen littering on the ground. You're talking about why are they able to do that? Now, the, the other question I would pose to you we have laws. Why is it not being enforced? Ah. Could, could we just hold? Let me just come back to Mr. Hani said. I just want to. No, no, you see, I want to answer the yeah, go ahead, brother and, answer. and then you see there is something that we call psychological nuances. There's something that we call social thinking on mm -hmm. outlook and input. The very same person that you say that will throw a bottle in Trinidad and Tobago would not do that in Paris, mm -hmm. would not do that in London, would not do that in America, right? And that person comes off a plane and he fits right into immediate, uh, immediate into yes. system. Why? Because there are consequences for your actions. Mm -hmm. And in psychology and sociology, we talk about people being social animals. We talk about your environment that you live in. And I'm there for that dictates how you behave, how you respond to a particular situation. Mm -hmm. And if we do not understand that, if there's no consequences for me reaching the work late, will I reach the work early? If there's no consequences for me throwing a bottle out of a car... Will I stop right, doing it? Uh, You're not going to stop doing no, it? No, no, well, this, that, <coughs> okay. that, is, that is the point that I'm making. In other words, 
there has to be consequences and the consequences has to be across the board it cannot be all right and let me and let me be i'm from right that when i get in power i move all the unc boards on them regardless of whether the board was performing well or not because it's my time so it's my people and i'm vice versa what that does is bring about a division within our society in a small society that is not required and is not necessary and the point that i want to, to make we are facing something for example on the port where this government trying to marginalize the seamen's union because of some personal harm reason and the port is suffering over the last going in five years the minister has not done any investment whatsoever in a port which is the gateway to your commerce and your economy they have spent billions of dollars on a sea bridge which minister sinanan caused the fiasco but they haven't spent a cent yet yeah. on the port which is the operational side and which is your commerce and your heartbeat and the arteries those are realities so we are seeing yet another La Petro train going and happen and they disguise it over a lot of things. And, and one has to pay attention to those things as a society. Because a society, as you rightly say, is me and you, you know. A society is not politics. And until we trump the division and the divisiveness that we see in politics and the ethnic um, cities that we, we see and tribalism, Trinidad is not going to go nowhere. We call every country that has that, in particularly in Africa, because I study it, we have the very same problem that we have in Trinidad. Go in Nigeria and all those countries and you're going to see. And all those countries that are developing, right, in, in East Asia and all those countries, that is growing now. Why are they growing? What can we learn from them? How do we move forward as a society? And I want to make that point. There must be consequences for your action and it must go across the board from top to, to bottom. bottom. Yes. It cannot be and it must not be selective because if I am Lavantil and I'm seeing people at the higher echelons of the society doing things and getting away, what message do you send to the people in that area and how do you expect them to respond and to behave? That was, those are some of the sociological issues that we have to address. But what, you speak, what, you speak address to, what you speak to, comrade, is bad politics across the board. This is what I am That's saying. what you're speaking to, and I am this agreeing is, with you on this that. Is I am, what I am, I am saying. saying. Before, so then I before, don't want to blame no public yeah. servant. I don't it's want bad to because about I, it. as an individual, do not throw no bottle outside. But I can't speak for everybody. That is Michael and he said, making his choice. But, but I am saying, if there is no consequences, right, for what we are doing, well, well, well what is going to happen? Yeah, yeah. How do we talk about a situation where I have to wake up a little child at 4 o'clock in the morning to come to work? to come to school for 8 o'clock and in order to reach in time for 8 o'clock you had to get up for yeah. 4, 4 o'clock due to the traffic yeah. due to the traffic yeah. and we're not addressing that but we decide to build a roundabout you understand in a particular area and a highway mm -hmm. in a particular area where coincidentally a certain person owns most of the land there but but the issue is not building a roundabout what is the issue that when you come into Port of Spain, the same among the cars has to go through the same arteries. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then what are you doing? Those are basic fundamental issues. Mr. Before, is there anything you want to add to what I I, 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 I I tell you, Michael, you you hitting the nail straight out the park this morning, boy. And uh, He's and, not a pepper, no. But that's all right. That's all right. This it's is like you begging for membership. No, no, man, no not, at all, not at all. <laughs> the, try that the, the, the population really and truly is um is about getting the information out to them, is for them to be educated in a sense and 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 to be able to think critically. Like we were saying before, it's about critical thinking. But where the traffic is concerned, this is something that we've been dealing with not today. We've been dealing this for years upon years upon years, and you're telling me that we can't have someone within public office that has a level of responsibility in ensuring that we can't uh, uh, fix this problem? I mean, Mike, we talk, have... But to Tony and Michael, I want to ask you a question. Do you really think in your, in your mind that a party gets elected to, to, to government 
to form an executive and to be part and parcel of the parliamentary system. Who calling the shots behind the, the scene with these people? Ah, that's with your because camp. I because I will ask not your camp. That's that, a general conversation. No. Because let me let me let me let me let me address it from all angles. Before you even go forward, where that is concerned for the Progressive Empowerment Party, we answer only to the people. There's no oligarchy. There's no one percenters. There's no corporate clan that is behind us financing us. But that's that's, that's, us that's nice, you know. A that, those, those are good, in, lovely, but, but lovely but song. Wait a minute. Wait the a reality minute. of it, Tony. The reality of it is when you get in there and you have the same peers who was involved in underhand behavior with the UNC and the PNM still around how are you getting around that but this is why we say we plan but to yes. purge the system we have to reboot because the republic it, no, 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 because we have we have to address on, it at on, all that's not brother and he said we have to address it at all it is not we're not blaming public servants alone you know but the whole system is cancerous so yes. therefore how are you going to treat how are you going to give the what chemo? so when you when you have a cancer what do you do not get rid of it but how are you getting rid of it just like that you, no, you're, you're going to put put it through chemo or you're going to just cut out all the parts barry let's just say <laughs> but, um, mr anisa has to say barry with the greatest respect again mm -hmm. i hear you talk about the same public servant that is corrupt and involved in eating with the governments and them there's a process for corruption you know for too long we have been making statements of corruption and we are not doing anything about it. I have heard the minister and I asked him for debate, make a statement that the port is the most corrupt entity mm. in Trinidad and the which is misleading and we know why he's saying that. That is a diversification from the true issues affecting the port and their plans to sell the port to your people and them. So you create all kinds of diversionary uh, right, uh, and an arm statement that destroys people professionalism and people lies. Because when you say the place is corrupt, what do you do for the professionals on the port? If the port collapses tomorrow, which it is fast approaching, given the government inability or, or disinterest in the port, fit a run down. Having said that, I want to get to the point. How do you really deal with corruption? And then let us deal with one or two things now. I remember the issue of campaign financing. I could tell you what the two parties said about it. You know. Are we any better off today? No. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because it is necessary in Trinidad and Tobago because that is our pol politics. Who pay the piper? Paul, the tune, the tune. Mm -hmm. and then that is what is happening and we are seeing it more vicious under this regime than any other regime. It, it is so blatantly clear who is getting everything, who are being denied. Is there any real um, um, social justice as we say in the ILO across the board, right? Is it, is it, why it is? Why it is that um, that, um, that um, we hold on that um, we as citizens are made to believe that is only a certain few people can be involved in business? Why it is that some of the business people who are condemned when you was in opposition, you are now defending their rights to do business? Mm -hmm. You understand? But when you was in opposition, you was condemning them, and you and and, and and I'm going to deal with them. I could I could call a few. Calico is one of them. And I have the clip where statement was made when they were in opposition. But when you were in power now, you say because it's a commercial thing, you can't interfere with it. Who is fooling who? What games are we playing with people's minds and Trinidad and Tobago? I am saying that we need a better Trinidad and Tobago. I'm saying I agree with you. All of us need to work towards that. But when you have a society where a few people you understand it's dependent and beholden on the government for the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. What happens? What happens? Where is the question of making people independent in terms of giving them jobs, in giving them your homes and, and whatnot? How do we justify the AGC lot? And you know what I'm talking about? Because I was part of that, right? Low-cost housing, but you're building houses for low-cost housing that's causing more than a million now. Right? Mr. Yes. Let me, yeah. I just yeah. want to know if Mr. Bifu yeah. has anything to add because I know you were just interrupted. Well, no, I actually would, uh, would 
sit out this one uh, because every point that Mr. Michael has just made mm -hmm. has definitely hit the nail on the head. Um, again, really and truly, uh, it is misbehavior in public office. The issues that we have that we're dealing with, it stems from the top, the very, very top, and works its way down. And again, when you have the public sector that's able to see this openly and no one is being held responsible for it, again, you will not have any other environment other than our public sector doing whatever they want to do. And that now would stem down into the population in itself. So really and truly, again, you know, we do need to have a proper level of evolution. We do mm -hmm. need to scrutinize the laws, the constitution, everything that is the fabric of Trinidad and Tobago and revisit everything. We have a very dynamic population on the island. It's very diverse. Even though we have a large Afro and Indo population, we do have Chinese, Syrian, whites, uh, 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 French, you name it. We have everything on planet Earth right here in Trinidad and Tobago. And Trinidad and Tobago is so blessed because we're off the hurricane belt. We have a, 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 a great agriculture that we're not developing in helping and or ushering in the diversification of our economy through agriculture. We have tourism that truly have not been tapped into. There's a host of different things that we don't even have to look towards uh, uh, oil and gas. And again, the question still lies. We have 11 administrations passing through the, the, the doors of the parliament. Why has no one taken that opportunity 57 years later in trying to develop our nation and giving our people hope and opportunity? All of our skill sets and, and, and we are having a major brain drain happening here in Trinidad and Tobago because all of our intellects are leaving our shores. Why? Because we don't have that level of hope and opportunity. So then now, what type of development are we leaving for our own country, for our own national, as Trinidad and Tobago? The third, again, I'm going to say it, you know, the third richest economy in the Western Hemisphere per capita, mm -hmm. a country that has all that it has. God just blessed us. Like, he, he just like, you know what? most blessed country in the world, Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> and we as a people don't even acknowledge that. We are not using it to the best of our ability and we are not allowing our citizens to be greater beneficiaries of what Trinidad has to offer as a nation. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the end of the day, again, I would put that square on the political administrations passing through the doors of the parliament because everyone has talked about being leaders. Everyone has talked about them being so educated and being so forward thinking. Look, Mr. Manning spoke years ago about 2020 vision. We are months away from 2020 vision. Where are we as a nation right now? Are we anywhere better? Are we anywhere closer? We are now still under the reins of a PNM government. And at the end of the day, did they carry the mantle forward where Manning was talking about in having our first world status within the 2020 uh, uh, well, well, uh, Michael, year. Michael year was part and parcel of being involved in Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. Michael sat on one of the, the boards of Trinidad and Tobago that was accused of massive corruption by individuals from within the PNM. Right. And to date, to date, nothing has proven to be truthful in that. What is Michael true? and what, Michael what is? and he said Michael and he said and called the hat and the ball deputy repetition was damaged in this country mm -hmm. as being a fraud upon the, the nation. You had a commission of inquiry that did not did not indicate that. If you go through to the off the off report, the off report didn't indicate that Michael and called the hat and them was was uh, was misbehaving. Was fraudulent to the to the treasury. Right. Okay. They, in it, they say they, they, they did not always follow procedure, which means at times they may have cut corners to get some projects up and running, if you understand the bureaucracy in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. because they have a, you have a mandate to deliver certain goods and services. Right. So sometimes we may cut corners. This is, it happens in all parts of the world. But who is held accountable when your corners is cut and it go wrong? And this is Michael point. Have we moved, moved on in, 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 in this country where when people are caught doing things the wrong way, have they been made to pay for their actions? Ah. And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. And why And why is this so? And the reason for that, it is because too much political interference in all the, in, 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 throughout Trinidad and Tobago from a party adversarial perspective that has caused Trinidad and Tobago not to grow. We have to stop this partisan behavior mm -hmm. for Trinidad and Tobago to grow. And as I said before we started this conversation, if 
the good ideas of PEP. There were maybe good ideas in the Congress of the people. There are good ideas in the People's National Movement. And there may be good ideas in, in outside of, in civil society. Yeah. Why can't we all pool together for the greater good of Trinidad and Tobago? Mm -hmm. Why it always has to come down to adversarial, combative party politics that leaves us in a ditch every five years? Hmm. And you did answer that as well. I just want to ask you, gentlemen, a question here. Do you think politicians make deals with criminals? Kasi, you could answer I would answer that. Um, coming from the Trinidad Police Service, I will take part of the American Constitution and plead the fifth on that. But we're not in America. I'm pleading the fifth <laughs> or they will get to say nothing that I'm not supposed to say. We're not in America. Right? I'm pleading the fifth. I might be a part, but I know when to stick me, be quiet. <laughs> All right. Anthony, you want to answer? Yes. Right. You take your chances. I right? take it my chance. And yes. 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 Let me shift in please. This <laughs> that is fine. <laughs> that is fine. But, but you know, we, we can't shun away from it. We have to yeah. face the reality that we're dealing with as a nation, as a citizenry. Uh, we have to truly know the dynamics in which we operate in and, and really and truly the political framework that we have, that we're operating under is all flawed. The people who are in these, uh, 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 working this political framework, uh, again, I'm not calling names, I'm not mm -hmm. seeing situations, but you know, it's, it's public knowledge. A lot of people on the ground knows that there is people within politics that are dealing with the underworld. But why? But why? What's, what's the end game in that? You, you just didn't want to dance. Yeah, but I'm going to ask him why because he's, he, 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 he went broader to it. <laughs> so, so, so why? What, what causes that? Well, we live in a narco state. You know that as a police officer. Yeah, but we live in a narco state. You know that but then we, if are, we, live in we, are, we are pushing mm -hmm. and this is where our pipeline actually uh, uh, takes this drugs. Um, now, in order for us to have an environment like this, you have to have key areas within government, within the law uh, uh, administrative bodies, whether it be Coast Guard, uh, uh, the, the, the police or what have you, uh, that is infiltrated, that has been tainted of sorts. Okay, so the, since you go that way, let me help you. The three institutions that are responsible for that, Coast Guard, Customs, Immigration. Mm -hmm. You see, when coming to the narco trade, Corruption, the police is way down the food chain. But the police still has a role to the, play you, in you, this. You listen to me? Okay. Right. What enters this country and what exists exist this country is the responsibility of the customs, immigration, and coast guard. The only time the police gets involved is when it hit land. Mm. So all the dynamics of it get into land. These three institutions are responsible. But it's on land. Well, when it gets on land, mm -hmm. then you have the prisons and the police office. Prisons service and the police service. And, and where, where does the police and prison service hold their responsibility as to they what's supposed on the to, they, they, They're not supposed to even allow it to reach land. They're supposed to lock up the Coast Guard officer, mm -hmm. the customs officer, or the immigration officer who involved. But to date, we But have somebody has a connecting twine to the police service from these three people mm -hmm. here. L let me just ask Mr. Michael and he said the same question yeah. regarding the politicians. What was he Do you think they make deals with criminals? Well, I will simply say the reality is, is that we see a lot of known members, both white color and blue color, and blue colors associating and mixing with politicians. That is all I'm prepared to say. Let us be frank again and I'll add one more to that point the little boys in Lavantil do not have the financial we are with it all mm -hmm. to run that business that business is a parallel business with the world economy and they need to have real cash and therefore our focus here is on Lavantil and Gonzalez and these people and them but the real real players are low to still shake their glasses in cocktail parties and interface with people at the highest levels in this society. That is a reality. And I could talk about one instance when I saw somebody that I know who was able to call a big man in this country on a telephone to get something done because they knew the person. And they were 
persons of questionable character. <laughs> that is what is happening in Trinidad. And if we want to fool ourselves, we can fool ourselves about it. And until we make those distinctions, okay? I heard the commissioner talk about people um, who run in gangs getting um, contracts. contracts yeah. But he never mentioned the big, big people and them who get in contracts. It's a strange word. The target is all is always the small man, not the big fish. You understand? Because there's a lot of big fishes that I don't want to call, but people know who are getting a lot of contracts in this country, and we know what they are involved in. Where is the political will, right, to address those issues and them? And I will say, finally, finally, I will say, until we address those issues, okay? All right, I will, and I could talk with authority, you know, because one must remember I made a statement and I was vilified by Radio 95. I will never forget that Dale and Tony, when I made this statement about dock workers in Point Gleas as being paid thousands of dollars to turn a blind eye with containers that were coming in. But that's that a fact. That no, were, that were um, questionable, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the following Saturday, a container that's supposed to have chickens was found with millions of dollars of drugs and no one was held accountable and I was vindicated. And, and, and I remember the Honorable Prime Minister at that time talking to me about it because workers were so afraid that they didn't want to go and make reports where they were supposed to make the reports because they were saying, we believe they are tied up in the whole scenario. That is a reality. I lifted, I saw it as the president of Seaman and Waterfront Workers Trade Union. And I do have to tell you, I had fear stretched too. That is a reality. Hmm. Garcia, now you, you wanted to say and, something. And, and I wanted to ask Tony this, and even Michael could chime in also. What you're saying there, I witnessed that on many occasions. All right? Um, there are things that as I explained to you off the mm -hmm. record before, that I know and people I know that who present themselves to be <laughs> well-rounded citizens Paragon of are really, um, they have a very, very dark side that I know of in terms of that same narco trade, mm -hmm. okay? But there was a state of emergency in 2012 in this country. And I wanna ask you a question, okay? Because at that time, your partner, the Mr. Alexander was also dining, was dancing with the angel of, of the People's Partnership government. And there was a state of emergency. Mr. Alexander, is it? Yeah, yes, Philip, Philip Alexander was dancing with the angels of the, the People's Partnership government at the time. <laughs> All right? It changed three shooters. It was cop. Was thinking, yeah, they had three different shoots. All right? During that state of emergency, the southwestern peninsula was exposed while all the concentration of the state of emergency was within the east-west corridor in so-called hotspots. Mm -hmm. Could you answer this question for me? Why was the Western Peninsula exposed, left open, unattended, untouched, and you had a state of emergency, and boats were going up and down? Nobody can tell my line there because I saw it for myself. Boats were making roads up and down the southwestern peninsula hitting through down the channel to go down to Venezuela, to Pitanales, to Guerrilla, to San Chiquito, and all those places. Nobody was being held. Large portions of Naku came in at that, at that point in time. So therefore, I have to ask the question, what was the purpose of the, 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 the state of emergency? You remember the then Minister of National Security saying that why they had to call the state of emergency is because what was going to take place would have made 1990 look like a tea party. Mm -hmm. And then you came up with this frivolous and vexatious threat or 13 people were arrested that they wanted to kill the Prime Minister. Over 4,000 people were arrested. What was really the purpose of the state of emergency? Good question. You were in the force at the time? I don't think, because um, I'm seeing comments as well. You said Philip Alexander was 
he was helped part him. and parcel. He was dancing with the angels of no, the People's Partnership um, Government. I could read some comments here because he said he was actually the communications, communications advisor to, to Mr. Gary Griffith. Yes. So he really had no part to play with that. He no, was just I am advice. saying that he was dancing with the angels of the People's Partnership. So if he was the communication advisor to Gary Griffith, who was part and parcel of the People's Partnership Government, he was really dancing with the angels then back then. Okay. I'm not saying that he played a role in what took place with the, with the state of emergency. Right, so, it, so yeah, he had that, nothing to no, do with No, I'm not it. saying that, but right. he said he was dancing with the angels of the People's Partnership. So therefore, what was really the purpose of the state of emergency? Mm. Who benefited from that immensely? Very good question. You understand me? So, Gus, let me ask you a question. Mm. What have the PNM done since they have been in office? This PNM? Yeah. The only thing I can see the PNM has done is to really try and see how they could restructure the economy in terms of balance, getting the economy back on its footing. But there are, right, there are some major, um, some other infrastructural things that they have done that must be commended. But in the whole general governance of the country, they are still lacking a lot. Um, there are things that I am generally not happy with. Mm -hmm. um, some of those I address it at the party level. Right. Um, some of those that, some, there are some that I come out publicly and I knock her and say, no, this is not making sense. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to grade the PNM at this point in time, in terms for the last four years, they'll get a five out of ten. Five out of ten? Yeah, I will give them a five out of ten. I mean, for a strong PNM supporter, you, you'd well, still well, very low. Well, we must face the reality because the ground is not happy. Right. You, you, we are going into two, to four elections, and the ground is still dis, disconnected with the, with the government. Mm -hmm. um, there is time to make up ground on that. Mm -hmm. But um, is, is the PNM where it's supposed to be at this point in time? Not, no, not really. There is a lot of work to be done. And if one is to listen to, to Brother Michael and he said, mm -hmm. I, have, oh, I, have, I have major concerns of what is taking place on the port because I have relatives who work on the port and at the high level in management in the port. And they have been expressing some of the views they have respected. That is why I didn't get into him and say, no, what he's saying is not true. Right. I know what he's saying is factual. Right. And so therefore, those are some of the things that you have to address. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of crime, as I told my brother here, right? Um, regardless, we have different political ideologies. I see him as a brother because right. he's from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, no government could treat with crime in the way crime should be treated unless you have a strong police service. Because the police service is the only institution to deal with crime and criminality, as it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, they could come up with a good crime plan. The government has to come up with a national security policy that encompasses all. Because the crime plan is just not about running down the bandits and kicking down a guy throwing Lavantillo or somewhere down on Marble on the line. It's also securing the borders. <sighs> and I'm happy you say that. It's also yeah. securing the borders. So therefore, what? What in, what in your national security policy is, has enabled the, the Coast Guard okay, to treat with what is happening on the borders? I just Why? want to pause a little bit mm. with you guys. I just want to ask my studio men if we can probably take a call with Philip Alexander just to see if we can have that dis a little discussion with Philip this morning. Only if we can have that. Um, all right, so we're just going to toss a short break and come right back to the program. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome back to PSA TV. I'm Avalon Williams. We have joining us this morning on, with a panel discussion, which is questions with Avalon. We have Mr. Michael Anisat. We have the deputy political leader from PEP, Mr. Anthony Defoe, and also we have PNM political activist, Mr. Garcia. How are you? I'm excellent. Some days I'm better. So we have on the phone with us the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Mr. Philip Alexander. Ms. Alexander, good morning. Good morning, Avalon. Thanks for having me. Yes, good morning, Kate Panel. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, yes. good morning, Hi. Philip. Good morning to you, sir. Mr. Mm -hmm. You hearing us, Philip? Yes, I am. Right. We were having a discussion where your name popped in, and I saw in the comments where you stated you wanted to clear your name there, where you were the communications advisor to Mr. Gary Griffiths. Do you mind clearing up anything there for us? Absolutely. When, when the People's Partnership call their state of emergency on August 21st, 2011. I was, at the time, 
a political and social activist and a columnist for the Trinidad and Tobago Mirror. I was the first person to respond to the Guardian's PM declares limited state of emergency with two columns that were widely quoted throughout the country. One on the 22nd of August called the Pandora Conundrum. The other on 22nd of November called State of Absurdity. Mr. Garcia is conflating things when, when his memory seems to fail. The only time I was associated with the People's Partnership in any way was when Gary Griffith became uh, Minister of National Security and asked me to be a communications advisor on his team. That was 2014. This is 2011. And I just wanted to clear that. And if you need me to post my two columns that I wrote onto your PSA threads, I will do that so as not to take up your time and read them. But I just want Mr. Garcia to know that I was marching against the UNC for Section 34. I was the only columnist that was being that was writing in the in the mirror on a weekday and a weekend because the the then opposition had no voice and no following mr garcia can speak as an activist and he could say what he knows from inside the pnn but he can't speak for me and he cannot speak for the progressive empowerment party and i reject that mr garcia you have anything to add to but who was ever trying to speak for the pro progressive empowerment party I never tried to represent the, the views of the power, uh, Progressive Empowerment Party. There's a gentleman sit here, and we exchanged conversations based on that. I said you were dancing with the legals of the People's Partnership Government. You said that the only time you were involved is when you became the communications person for, the, for Gary Griffith. Won't you also part and pass the communications or working close to Arnold Roberts? No, I was not. So okay, that so those, so those, just those. Did you hold on, hold on, gentle, Mr. Gentle. Just, just, just now, you that had your say, again. you had your say, and that's a problem. It no, no, you no, no, talks no, no. a little too that much. Timing and again had nothing to do with the 2011 state of the okay, world. Okay, all right, okay, fair enough. Okay, let me, let me leave it no, at no, that. No, no, but you said okay, that fair. That's that that that's the end of that. Fair enough. Let's leave it at that. I said that's that's the end of that, Philip. That's the end of that. Okay. This is addressed to the panel and the viewers. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, fair, fair enough, enough, Philip. Um, okay, thank you. Philip, I just want to ask you a question. As political leader of the PEP, you know, what, what could you bring to this country for citizens? Because we're asking for a change. We are fed up of, people are fed up of PNM. They have no trust in UNC. What changes can you bring, Philip? I, I want to say to Mr. Michael, and he said, I am so proud of what is coming out of your mouth, sir. And I hope that when opportunities arise for you to be able to speak without fear of victimization, that you will stand and you will speak what you know. Because I felt for a long time that I was the only person speaking these things. I lived in a country where in the 80s recession, an entire business community burned Port of Spain to the ground for insurance money. Nobody was held for arson. It inflated insurance rates to the rest of the country and the people don't even know that they have been paying for arson since the 80s. True. I want to also say that the issue that Tony tried to bring up in response to Mr. Anisette about securing the nation's borders, Mr. Garcia was driving for Patrick Manning when Patrick That is, Manning, a, that is inaccurate. I was never I a driver. You know what? I won't call your name. Right. You, you, best, you best don't do because you, you are not making an accurate statement. I was I never a driver for Patrick Manning. You keep no making that nonsensical statement and I keep having to correct you. All right. Okay. I have never been a driver for Patrick Manning. Okay. Talking about drug trade and securing the borders. Whatever you did in your past has nothing to do with this. Securing the drug trade and protecting the borders. We bought a 360 degree radar from tens of millions of dollars 25 years ago. We still yet to use it. But that's, that's inaccurate because the, board, the, the 360 radar was being used between 2002 and 2009. Mr. 2000, Garcia, I just saw, hold on, Philip. Philip, you cannot be wanting to with, speak I all alone. Okay, okay. Philip, um, let, let's allow us to respond. Person, please. No, but I want to, Mr. Garcia, you're not letting me finish my let, point. Let's just hear um, Philip and then we're going to end the call and you can probably have your say. Okay, let, let Philip, you can go ahead. The, 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 I just wanted to debunked some things that were said. We bought a 360 degree radar and we put it in to watch the sea. But we had no response tools. There were no fast attack boats, no interceptors. When Gary came in as commissioner, uh, of Minister of National Security, 
we pulled out and dusted off the maritime security wall. He was getting ready to implement that. That is why a former prime minister was fired. We have a situation where drug traffickers, narco traffickers dictate the pace of the country. We have a Scott drug report that was very clear about that since the 80s. The narco traffickers in this country have so much power, we didn't even get to lay it in the parliament. It is time for an updated commission of inquiry into the, into the drug trade in Trinidad and Tobago. And on another point, the off, the off report into the, into the construction sector recommended that the director of public prosecutions become involved. There are questions to be answered and, and trying to sanitize the past regimes and what they've done. Mr. Anisette is correct. Tony Defoe is correct. Trinidad and Tobago has been looted. We've spent one trillion dollars in budgets since 1962. Look around Trinidad and Tobago and tell me where that money was. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you, Philip. Let me, let me just correct some misinformation Philip put into the public domain. Okay. Right? And this yeah. misconception, Philip, keep carrying on it, that I was Mr. Manning's driver. I was never a driver for Mr. Manning. Right? Not even to drive fly. Okay? That's one. Secondly, the radar that was purchased under the Pandy regime, not, not under the Pandy regime, but purchased under Manning when he first became Prime Minister, mm -hmm. it was never activated under Pandy. When Mr. Manning took, took office in 2001 to 2010, Mr. Manning activated that radar. Part of that whole radar system were the OPVs, which different kinds right, of where we have fast, fast patrol vessels. So, uh, sub, uh, supplementing the OPVs, which should have been um, stationed in, in strategic position together mm -hmm. with the radar, with the patch, fast patrol vessels, that would have interfered with the narco trade. Mr. Manning was almost killed for that. And when I say almost killed, I'm talking politically. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right, secondly. Because at one point in time, he sat down, he sw they were able to see exactly the pattern of behavior on the seas through the radar. In come the People's Partnership government, and the servers were shut down, and the radar was shut down. So almost five years of the People's Partnership government, nothing was taking place in terms of the drug trade. And that's why I ask you, what was the purpose of the state of emergency? And what was its accomplishment? Because during that period, more guns and drugs came into this country. So who it was benefiting back then? And those are, those are valid questions, Mr. Defoe. Of course. You understand me? And as I said, and let me let, let Philip understand, I said this, there are good ideas in the PEP. There are good ideas outside of the PEP. Even within the PSA, even within the structure of the, 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 the labor movement, there are good ideas. Why can't we all sit and collate all these ideas for a better Trinidad and Tobago? And the reason for that is bad party politics and divisive party politics is causing that. Mm. There's no way I sat here this morning and pat the PNM in the back for everything. No, I'm one of the few PNM activists that calls it as it is with the PNM. But I love the structure of the PNM because the PNM is very well structured. Many political parties come and go because they are badly structured. They are not structured for the purpose of sustaining development of Trinidad and Tobago. They are structured for the purpose of getting rid of the PNM out of office. Okay. Mm. And that's where they make the mistake. Yeah, well, uh, as well structured as the PM may be, uh, it still has not transcended down to the actual citizen and for them to have a greater sense of benefit. And I don't, I'm not disagreeing with that. Because the PNM should have done much, much more. Much more. Because with the resources that was available to the PNM, and that is factual. Let's, let's face it as it is. Mm. The only way we can cure as a nation is when we accept where we went wrong. The only way a human being can be healed is if he accepts that he's ill. And if we don't accept that, the, that there, are, there were flaws into the governance of the PNM throughout its history, then the PNM of itself will not grow. Mm. It will just re keep revolving. One leader come and will support the leader. No new ideologies coming towards meeting the, 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 the ever-changing times. Well, again, you know, it's, it's only so many times you can do the same thing and expect, try to expect a different result. Uh, and again, for the last 57 years, we've seen that we've had the same result every single time. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, for me, as a regular citizen, I'll tell you, I am absolutely upset 
at myself to have to be in this environment right now because I look at myself as a regular citizen. And the only reason why I've seen my, my two, two generations of my family line sat and wait for change and has not gotten that change, man. And so I have now taken it upon myself because I look at my children and my children's children and I say to myself, you know what? I must stand and, and face the bullet. I must stand and face the music and deal with this head on and do what I can in my own capacity to bring that change. I've seen the Progressive Empowerment Party usher in change, usher in a policy that has that is so dynamic, it's so forward thinking. And I'll tell you, I've, I've gone, I've been with the Progressive Empowerment Party going on three years now. And, uh, you know, first stepping into this organization, I needed to make sure for myself that this was not, not the same uh, show that any other political party uh, uh, before it uh, has been putting on for the population. And one question I want to ask Is the Progressive Empowerment Party are wrong because they want to get rid of the PNM? No, the Progressive Empowerment Parties are wrong to bring betterment, hope, and opportunity for Trinidad and Tobagonians. Right. And if and in doing if, so, if, we're, we're in doing so, Mr. Mr. Defoe, in doing so, which I will accept as a Trinidadian bringing change and betterment, whether it is under the PNM or anybody, but in doing so, who are you really who are the people you all are speaking to? We are speaking to Trinidad and Tobagonians. Right. What I want to say is the only person I know I know is Philip alone just talked to me here mm. on WhatsApp. Every morning, Philip sent me WhatsApp messages. Some I respond, some I don't respond. You understand it? And I, leave, I read the messages. I am friends with Felicia, uh, what's her name? Felicia. Felicia Holder mm -hmm. on Facebook. I, I watch some of her postings. If the ones I do agree, I don't agree, I do not make any comments on it as to create combativeness. You understand me? Because you want to be able to buy into a product without having to be combative. Mm -hmm. The problem we have in Trinidad and Tobago is that, and I say it again, I hope the Progressive Empowerment Party does not fall trap to that. That they become extremely combative and it is for the only purpose of getting rid of the PNM. Because the People's Partnership came into prominence. Get rid of the PNM. We get rid of the PNM and we replace it with Kamala and them. And what do you think happened after that? Well, boy, let me Trinidad tell you. If, in, 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 let's hear um, in a perfect world, mm -hmm. if, if the Progressive Empowerment Party had its way, we would clean the slate of every political entity that's been on the shores here in Trinidad and Tobago. Simply because we have the proof to show, we've had the track record to show that none of these bodies have brought any type of betterment to the people in Trinidad and Tobago. And even though no, you have... Say no, 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 we, we can't say. say. Yeah. We can't say. No, I'm not taking that. No. I'm taking well, that. Well, okay. so, so, the point of the matter is, is this, is that you, you have a body, and we will use PNM as, a, as a, a, a case study here, because again, the PNM has had economical, social, political reign in Trinidad and Tobago, regardless of what the dynamics has been attached to it, where the underhanded drug trade and everything else has been concerned with, where the financiers and one percenters, the point of the matter is, is that we are children of the soul. We are the grandchildren, as we love to say, from India and Africa. But the point is, is that our navel string is buried on the ground here in Trinidad and Tobago. Our, our focus need not be in Africa or India. It needs be Trinidad and Tobago. What can we provide for our citizens, a citizenry that has come out of indentured laborship as well as slavery, having now the reign of control of our destiny, having getting uh, 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 independence to say, well, we have all the resources. We are positioned in a place that's off the hurricane belt. We have so many different things going for us. Why has not greater development taken place here in Trinidad and Tobago? Why have not the people been not just the third richest economy in the Western Hem Hemisphere, but maybe number one in the Western Hemisphere? Why couldn't that not be so? Because we had the opportunity in order to present that to our population. You are saying that you are following an entity such as the PNM. You've had Manning, you've had Williams, you've had Chambers, you've had uh, uh, Rowley. The point is, which one of these leaders have seek the true interests of Trinidad Trinbegonians? Which one? Dr. Williams? No, Dr. man. Just don't. Go, hold on. Go ahead and answer. But just I'll, now, I'll yeah. have you answer just now. Because the point of, uh, to this is, is that, again, we spoke before the show even started, where the strongholds of the PNM is all the lowest rung of society within Trinidad and Tobago. How could you have? 
your key body of people are the ones that are suffering the most on the shores of Trinidad and you've had economical rain, you've had social rain, you've had rain across the board for the majority of, of, of Trinidad and Tobago's history. The point is there's no excuse to excuse that whatsoever and I hope the day can come for PNM supporters to open their eyes and realize this because when we say, when the PNM jump up on ball is we time now, who is the we? Who is the we that we is being referred to? Because it's not the people in Laventil, it's not the people in Sea Lots, it's not the people in Enterprise, because they are still living the same way they have lived when that red, white, and black went up to present day. So what are we really saying to our population? What are we saying to our, to our supporters? And forget about the supporters. We now broker to be in that parliament to do what? Forget about politics. We now have to think governance. We now have to ca capsule the entire country as a whole, whether you vote for me or not. You, as a citizen, must gain some level of benefit from Trinidad and Tobago. We, as the people calling ourselves leaders, have to create a system on the ground in Trinidad and Tobago that can bring benefit across the board for the voters that voted for you as well as the voters that did not vote for you. Once your name is Trinidad and Tobagonian, born on the soil of this twin isle, the point of the matter, your agenda as a leader going in, no matter what the political uh, uh, body that you are supporting, you are to seek the benefit of every citizen on the ground. And that's the point. We have a large portion. Look, we talk, make joke all the time, pass the carony. You know, what do we do as PNM? How much development do we put down there? We look at the East-West Corridor. We've been doing that for the last 57 years, but yet it's the East-West Corridor that have most of the, 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 the lowest rung of society within Trinidad and Tobago as its citizens. Why is that? Who is it that's going to now say to them, to, to, to say to the population, I am justifying that action for the last 57 years? Who? You? Are you going to stand by that? Are you going to try to defend that? The but, rain but of, will you, of, will you, of will you cease for a bit and allow? Sure, go right ahead. Question? Go right ahead. I have never tried to defend that because in my conversations with you, you would know. And if you're being honest to the population here on TV now, I told you that fifty percent of what is good about this country is as a result of the PNM, and fifty percent, the other fifty percent, what is bad about this country is also as a result of the PNM. How much more truthful and openness you want with that? And I have said that the PNM should have done much, much more with the resources that was available to it to its base areas. I said that. I, I give and I, I hold them to account for that. I hold them to account for that. Mm -hmm. But from Williams to Manning, Manning tried to make a difference and Manning realized that, in, that he stepped on some toes in trying to make a difference and they came after him. And you know that too. So this you is just a know, because Because that's now. Look at right. the public service. Look at all the buildings that the public service rents. Then uh, the public servants work while I knock them for the lack of candor at times. I, I also have to be sympathetic for the conditions that they work in. They work in utter squalor. Why? Right. In come Patrick Manning with a plan to reshape that whole thing. And what happened? The beneficiaries of the treasury start to come after it. Because they are the ones that the buildings are being rented from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but again... And they are going to hold on up. Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right? I am, I am helping you across mm -hmm. the board here. Mm -hmm. I am not saying that what you, the points you raise are not factual. Right. It is there. The evidence is there. I cannot deny that. I'm mm -hmm. not here to, to defend the PNM on everything. Okay. But I'm also here to speak practically to you. In come a, a Prime Minister who saw that, who sat with, and he said, I know everybody. And decided, look, we're going to build government campuses through all Trinidad and Tobago so that you will, he said that he wanted to have one-stop shops so that the population and the public wouldn't be stressed to having to go pay bills in all different directions, one, and that the public officers will be working in full school state-of-the-art conditions that we will get better service from them. He got attacked for that. Can I ask you one question? Yeah, go ahead. Why are we still dealing with no water 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year in 2019? And, 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 and he said to answer, answer that, that as well. That, you know why? Because he said, just made a comment there that I think it may have flied over the head of 
of the Jedi, the, the listening public. When, when we take party hats and put them on state boards, this is what you get. Mr. If, you, Anisad, if you take I'm... the best of the society and put them on state boards, void of party politics, but following a policy that will, that will encompass the development of Trinidad and Tobago, I think you will get betterment in Trinidad and Tobago. We have to be void of party politics when we get into governance. Stop feeling because a guy looks different to you mm -hmm. that we must, he must enter, or he made the most noise during an election campaign that he get on a state board. And when you watch, he just don't have what it takes. Job for the boys. But exactly. Don't go, as you talk about jobs for the boys, who gets licks for saying no jobs for the boys? Hmm. Could you remember that? <laughs> when he was, who gets licks for saying no jobs for the boys? Let, let's be frank, honest, and brutal in our conversations now. Yeah, I be frank. Not, be I honest. Not, be brutal. Not, yeah. I'm not saying that Patrick Manning was without fault. Right. But he had a vision for this country that would have moved this country forward. Yeah, but we are not anywhere close to that vision. He cannot get anywhere close to that because he was stepping on the toes of the narco trade. Yeah, but we are spinning wheels in mud 57 years later. Yeah, but you still can't be telling me about 57 years later. What I want to know from you, if you want me to divorce the PM, then tell me what it is you bring to the table. What dynamics that you're bringing to the table that will cause me to go out here and preach the gospel of the pep so that people could buy into it. This, this, <laughs> this, represents, this represents nice documentation. Right. It's not documentation. This, this represents all of this. I see this throughout for the last 57 years from all political this, institutions. No, okay. no, you couldn't right? have seen this. Okay. Good. You couldn't have seen right. this. Everybody have nice cities and donkey cities printed on paper. Mm -hmm. Right? It looks good. Okay? But here what I am saying. Garcia, let me, let, let me just cut you a bit and mm. let me ask you a question because I'm looking at comments and stuff here now live. People say that they're fed up of the PNM. Mm -hmm. They cannot trust the UNC, mm -hmm. right? My question to you this morning is how do you assess the leadership of our prime minister? Um, mm. to, be, to be brutally honest, Dr. Rowley was not prepared for prime ministership. It was foisted upon him because they needed to oust man him. And uh, he had to learn on the fly, and it is, taking, it is, getting, him some, it is getting him in some difficult, difficulty because he's now beginning to understand how the dynamics of what, how things goes up there. And because of his ill-preparedness from, not from a party perspective, but an ill-preparedness from understanding the full psyche of Trinidad and Tobago, he will be going through this turbulence. So you're saying that Mr. Uh, Dr. Rowley does not or is not aware of the psyche of Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah? Uh, he's now beginning to learn it and understand it. Because it's not, an, it's not a psyche you could get up in the morning and just learn just so. Not even you, Philip, nobody could understand this in one, in one swipe or in one conversation. This is a very difficult country to govern in. As simple as it's simplistic at, it seems because you have what you call brotherhood in conversations. It's not that easy, you know. There are some key players in this society here that operates behind the scenes that if you are not wary of that, if you get in government in the morning, they'll, they'll make it shave your head. Mm. Mr. Anissa, do you yes, have anything sir. to add to that? <laughs> Wrong head. I will, um, There's a famous saying by um, <coughs> Martin Luther King, and, 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 and he said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matters. And I may repeat it then. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matters. And I want to compliment um, um, PSA for this kind of discourse. Because you do not see this on traditional media mm -hmm. at all. And I'm saying that against the context because traditional media is controlled by a certain group of people. And media and radio stations and freedom of expressions is so critical to the very existence of democracy that we have to pay particular attention to the agendas of those TV and radio stations that speaks to a particular agenda because that is a form of education. And when you misrepresent and miseducate the population, we're gonna find ourselves in this kind of um, situation so that I am saying that 
we need to understand, and I made that point, I will make it again. We did not have any substantial or material transformation when we got independence. We didn't go about building a homegrown solutions and understanding our problems from our perspective and therefore put in place homegrown solutions. Coupled with that is the very political system that we inherit, right? And, and, and it cannot be fair to say that the PNM did nothing to change Trinidad and Tobago. When one goes back to 1956, 1919, and coming right back up to where we were then and where we are now, right. there are changes. And we have to admit that. But the issue to me, to me, to me, is whether or not the social changes that we speak of really and truly went across the board where every individual would have benefited as a people and as a society. To me, that is democracy. And I'm saying no. I am saying no. And therefore, we need to look at that. We need at our age group to start to make the transformational changes that is necessary to avoid that pitfall. Because we have made it, and to me it makes no sense why this go to analyze. The question is, is what do we do in terms of solutions? We have to be solution oriented. We must be solution. And I'm saying and I make no apologies for it. They could spite me because they continue to spite me. This government is one of the most arrogant government that I have ever seen in Trinidad and Tobago. And when you have leadership that is spiteful and vindictive, when you have leadership that can use the political power to spite people at the level that I have seen, and I make specific reference, which I could talk about, to the two young people whose career have been destroyed by this government. When you have politicians going on a political platform and say, we fire them, and we have forensic evidence this will let them go to court. What does that say about a society that speaks of democracy and justice? Does the government have any role in firing anybody on a board or on the port? Does a government have any role in firing a board where you write in your book that Fodi Ferreira was a beacon and continue to be a beacon to Trinidad and Tobago, and they were fired unceremoniously on the basis that there is corruption, and a man who spent all his life in politics, right, is now branded with a corruption brush where there is no supporting evidence to justify that. And I'm saying all that against the backdrop. Until we change the political system that operates, where winner takes all, and um, excuse my language, well, to help with the other people around them, we're going to find ourselves, because you could talk with whatever you want. Because if you come into power and there's the same players, you're going to have to dance to the truth. And I make specific reference to Obama. Obama came in with a lot of bright ideas. But when the forces, right, that controls your economy is up against you, sometimes you have to make decisions that is not what you say. And I am saying that this government, and he saying about five, has demonstrated where their allegiance is by the actions who get contracts, who they deal with, and how they deal in with business to the detriment to the majority of the citizens that support them in this country. And that's a reality. And I don't need to go in. We had a contract, and they pull it, a union contract. They, they, they sought to do all kinds of things. And when a government could be so facetious to bring in young ladies who used to work with us to try to get them to say in a joint select committee that they used to get work on the ferry for sexual favors with the boss, right? You understand where we are going. And they try to push the young ladies and them, the young lady to say it, but she couldn't say it because she knew that wasn't true. And that's a reality. Hmm. 
That is what's going on in this country. Simply because Michael Anise did not support the going away of the fast ferry and in the manner because we warned the minister of the consequences and what we said came to pass. But could that also be as a result that you and the prime minister have had a, 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 a fight before? You became prime minister. No, but then, prime minister then you see, fighting against each you other. See, you see, could, could it, yes, no, hear me question. I yeah. never fight with nobody. Uh, could it because remember he took you to court Hello. For, for saying that you slandered him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you were part of the Unicode board that, that he had a, a problem with. Yeah. Okay. And now he has become the prime minister. It, could it because he didn't forget all of those those little instances with you and so on that he may have had his head in a different angle was all causing all of that? All I will simply say is that I don't have the mind of the Prime Minister and I don't want to think for the Prime Minister. But if what you are saying is correct, we have a serious problem in Trinidad and Tobago. That is all I am saying. If what you are saying is correct. Accent. You understand what I am saying? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to repeat what Patrick Manning said. I don't okay. want to repeat what Patrick Manning said. He's like a raging bull. I could go on. I don't want to see, repeat it. But I respect the office of the Prime Minister. And that is what we have to do. And I will continue to respect the office of the Prime Minister, irrespective. And then, and then I could tell you something which I never tell the public. I had a good chance of winning the appeal because if you read it, the armed judgment. And it had people from the other political divide was willing to take up the case free. And I said, there's a God above. I know I didn't do anything. Let it be so. I will pay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the final point that I want to make, eh, the political system has to change. As long as we have this adversarial system, winner take all, first pass the post system. And I want to remind you, that there was a commission of inquiry and they talk about proportional <coughs> representation. And our lone prime minister at the time, Eric Williams, said, no, you're not supporting that because that is a dagger that's going to be aimed at the heart of the PNM. And I am saying we may very well need to revisit the you think time, system. You think the time has come? The, you think the time has come that the, the people time, will have, the, the, the question, the question. Yeah. Do you think the time has come that the people will, like, will accept proportional representation? But um, the people did not um, refuse it. It was the politicians. Okay. Because you remember the commission of inquiry that came about. The Hugh Wooden on the Hugh Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. went all over Trinidad and Tobago and coming out of that, that is what they glean. You understand what I'm saying? Mike, I just want to pause you for a bit because yeah, yeah. I'm seeing um, persons just want to ask questions on... Do you, um, why do you think Ansel Roger and OWT went to such small finances to buy o, the refinery? Small? Mm -hmm. Well, I, listen, I cannot speak to Ansel Roger, mm -hmm. what he did, why he did it. I wasn't part of it. And I have confidence that they have the ability to understand the dynamics that they are, in, they are presently in, and I'm there for. The need to cross the T's and dot your I's is necessary because it's a big financial outlay. Mm -hmm. and, and I also supported OWTU in that business. And every press release which I gave a copy to you that I sent to the media, all the TV station, they did not print it for some reason. Right, we send it out three times not to support it and we give the justification, but, but we also went on to say as not to, we hope, that this is not a selective approach by the government because we welcome the government because we in NATO have always expressed a view that the issue of workers' cooperative, the issues of expanding the wealth across the board is necessary. And the only way you could do that is by involving workers and the trade union within the business aspect and entrepreneurial development. In other words, in other words, Business must not appear to be the domain of a certain group of people and make us believe that we must always be drawers of waters and hewers of wood. And that is the problem that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. How do we break that shackle? Right. No, we could, we could break it. 
It was done. I'm not saying uh, no. I said no, how do we? All right. It was done in um, 1956 in um, Spain, Basque Spain, when they set up a cooperative called Mondragon. Google it and you will see. Mm -hmm. And that is the 10 biggest company in Spain right now. And they have been able to resist all kinds of recession, unlike other companies, because it is workers. But why? Call. But, but, but said, pause for a bit. Yeah. Why, why when the Robinson regime uh -huh. was offering the, the public, the, the workers and the public servants and all Trinidad yeah. and Tobago, 10% in all of the, the, it was offering them shares yeah. in all the state in enterprises. Nell. In Nell. In, 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 right? It was yeah. at the time, was um, Nick. 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 Right. It was Nick at the time. Why did the unions coupled with the All politicians right. went against that when right. that was part and parcel of assisting the, 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 the listen, workers to, the, to own what they, they listen, work for? Listen. Why it was rejected All right. then? I will tell you why. You see, lack of education mm -hmm. is one of the worst things that could happen to any society. And workers were always trained to believe give me my money in my hand, I want my back pay. Oh, oh. And they never saw investment because we were never educated along those lines. Okay, I, as an individual, wasn't it, but I read, I understood it, but, <coughs> but um, let me say that the Seaman and Waterfront <coughs> Workers Trade Union supported the very idea. And I remember PSA was one of them, and I will know the president at that time. I know McLeod said, we want we money, give we die, we money, we want it. Not understanding the long term. Yeah, the long term effect of investment in company because we was never taught to understand that to be rich, to make money, you don't work for a salary. You have to invest your money, and your money must make money for, for you. you. So your money must work for you. I want to ask you a question. You know, yeah. um, before the show started, I was just you know asking you a few things on Pep. Mm -hmm. I know Anthony will jump in. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we speak about leadership and stuff like that, and we're looking for the next person to lead this country. What is your assessment of Philip Alexander as prime minister for this country? Philip has a passion for the country, yes, but he talks too much, and he's too combative. He has to be smart with his how to fight. Now, liking, liking to fight is one thing, mm -hmm. but knowing how to fight and when to fight is the next thing. Sometimes they must not see you coming when you're fighting. And sometimes you must confront them. And Philip's problem is that he's too confrontational. Just in this, in this discourse right here with us, he wanted to dominate the conversation. I think he probably wanted to get his point across. Yes, you could get your point across, listening. but you could get a point across where you don't have to be combative. Take, for instance. You also made a comment where you said his um, personality and your, the prime minister. It's one is of the same. It's one of the same. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a problem we have. It. For instance, as I made, as I told uh, Anthony here, look how Anthony and I will, we are, we are sharing divergent views, mm -hmm. we are having disagreements, but we are not combative. And this is where you will get people to buy into your product. Right. Because people look at your leadership. Problem with Mariano Brown. Mariano Brown may be very well saying the right things. But Mariano Brown is too angry. The problem with Morgan Drew. Morgan Drew was saying some of the right things. But Morgan Drew was coming across from a space of anger, bitterness, and hate. So therefore, people were seeing his energy, but not hearing his conversation. Mm -hmm. And people already understand that. And there is an energy that you give off. So are you saying because of Philip's um, energy and stuff, people it, may not be hearing it? They may not want to come across because of the energy that it is getting from him. They're getting that combative, angry energy. Mm -hmm. Now, some of what that Pep is proposing is good. Right. It's, it's good. Some of what they are proposing, I am asking what is the practicality in it. Um, and then one of the things I wanted, I wanted to touch on him, Philip or did say that because I follow the program on social media and so mm -hmm. on, that... In this conversation with him one day, they were talking about crime and criminality and how to treat with crime. And that, <clears throat> that he will have 41 deputy commissioners throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And you have to understand that how the police service operates. To have 41 com deputy commissioners, you're going to also have to create 41 states of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And you will have to give each, state, each one of the, 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 the constituencies, you'll have to give them their own legal advisor, right? You'll have to, that is, you have to find the own attorney general. Mm -hmm. You may very well have to make them, make the, the head of the state a governor. You have to, they have to find a way, the own way to raise their own monies, all right, supported by the state. 
and therefore for that to, to be operational because every deputy commissioner come with two assistant commissioners. Right. Every um, assistant commissioner come with four senior superintendents. Every, every senior superintendent comes with about three superintendents, ESPs, the amount of constables come down. How are you funding that? So sometimes we say things that sound exciting, but it is not practical to the atmosphere and the environment we live in. Mm -hmm. And that's where I will knock the pep some ways, but the pep have good ideas. Let me ask you another question. We've been, we've passed through a hurricane disaster <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, Tobago, Trinidad. Have you seen your prime minister on the ground? No, I don't think at times you need the prime minister to be on the ground if you have proper systems in place to manage the disaster. Okay. I think the prime minister could sit in a room together with his top advisors. Tobagonians will sit the hardest. Yeah, but... Um, Watson Duke went over to Tobago yeah, but and stood with yeah, but people. The Prime Minister did not plan, make plans to attend the UN General Assembly because the hurricane was coming. That was something that happened... Mia Motley, Donald Trump, had bigger engagements and cancelled when their country was in a disaster. Yeah, but um, where, did, where did Donald Trump cancel? Only where he had his red meat. Is, it that, is, is Philip doing a good job on the ground? Do, do you think Philip has have the leadership skills? Philip, We've seen him Philip in dungeons and holes yeah, in yes, Port of Spain all yeah, over. Yeah, Philip has some leadership skills, but I just point out where, he, where it will go south for him. Mm -hmm. He needs to do more listening. He needs to do But less. you don't think he's doing enough listening because we've no, been seeing him all over. No, no, no. Listen, going all over doesn't mean you're listening. You know. Going all over doesn't mean you're hearing either. Because if when you sit down, on your conversations. You speak as if you are the king and everybody else are the subjects. You will get into a problem. Why I like Anthony as a deputy political leader mm -hmm. is because Anthony is willing to accept criticism. You the see, so you're saying Philip can't no, take not criticism? Doing, no. The minute you go, the minute you want to be a leader in anything at all, you must be able to embrace criticism. I think anybody, um, Garcia, will jump in defense if they do not have facts on what they're saying. So Philip is that type of yeah, person. I think he but will but always, but yeah, but you know. They're, they're, that is not what they're dealing with, you know, about being in defense. You know. If somebody makes a statement about you that is inaccurate, yes, you have to defend it. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about designing systems to help govern the country. And if somebody is critical of what you see or what the system is in, you can't feel, you can't want to bite at the person for that. Mm -hmm. You may very well, as a scanner has said, there are times, Morgan Joe, who I used to sit down and listen in the square, came up with good ideas. But the reason Morgan Job was not taken seriously is that every time you criticize Morgan Job, he used to cost your mother. Right? Philip ain't using obscene language, but he using other words to, to the effect. Mm -hmm. So you have, to be, you have to be mindful of these things. Likewise, when Dr. Rowley was in opposition and he made some vulgar statements, I came out and was critical of it. Okay? Like put him on, um, put Kamala put that with him on. He just put it nuts. Let, let me ask you another question. We speak about Philip, and you just pinpoint Anthony has some sort of skills where you, he listened. Would you say that Anthony could be a good leader as well? That he has the he has the potential to be a good leader. Mm -hmm. But being a leader of Trinidad and Tobago is a very complex thing. Mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago is not that easy and simplified to govern because, as I said before. There are some players behind the scene that if you don't if you don't walk a tight rope with them, you get yourself in trouble. Patrick Manning became a victim of that because he tried to see if he could have could unravel these guys. And mm -hmm. these guys show me how happened. I have the power and we want to deal with you in a particular way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Another thing you have to be careful of and be mindful of. The pep has to be mindful of. Even well, forget Kamala and then we sat there with them. So like, you're forgetting Kamala and yeah, you're forgetting yeah, forget the CFP. So which I, I, means you're giving pep, pep. You're giving pep a chance. I'm, I'm willing to give pepper hearing right and um, because i think that some of the things they want to bring to the table is really meaningful to the development of Trinidad and Tobago. right so i'm willing to give pepper hearing not that i'm i'm going to say well pep is the greatest thing to happen to Trinidad. would you support pep if what they're producing for trinidad and tobago encompasses everybody in moving trinidad and tobago so forward. you'll vote for pep of course i will vote for him my vote my vote is personal mm -hmm. nobody will know who i vote for but right now i vote in pnl Okay. And I ain't hiding that. It, it have no way in Trinidad and Tobago are voting against the PNM in the next couple of elections until I see something better. Okay? But one thing I want to caution the pep with, I did caution the PNM with that. When you're in opposition, 
Be careful of the things you see and the position you take. For when you get into government, it may come back to haunt you. When the Prime Minister, when the then opposition leader said that if the government, he made a statement, and I'm paraphrasing that, if the government can, can, can And again, it's not a matter of him being brass or, or, or too... Um, combative. Too combative, yes. Philip is a citizen that is, just as myself, is absolutely angry. Because we say and see people who are supposed to be educated, supposed to be forward thinkers, and yet our country is the way it is, is, is where it's at. And uh, at the end of the day, really and truly, uh, you know, we do need someone with a, a, a thick skin, broad back to move the country forward. Because uh, like Mr. Barry here has said, we have major issues in our system in the fabric and, and how we conduct ourselves both politically both with, as well as in the private sector uh, uh, and the public sector sector for that matter it's, it's across the board so the thing is this this year 21 policies really yes you look at it as pen on paper and it's being typed up and it's nice words but in reality these are policies is actually 101 policies and these policies have been in development for the last 10 years, literally with people on the ground here in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as our portion of our population that's left Trinidad and Tobago, that's been fortunate enough to be in a first world country, seeing systems work and trying to develop it in a way where it can be applicable for us here in Trinidad and Tobago. Because we do understand of a system that we've been practicing for the last 57 years, and it would be a, a, a shock to the population and the country as a whole going from one to another without a proper transitional phase. All of these are things that we have studied long and hard. This is not something overnight. It's again, 10 years in the making, if not longer, in some policies uh, cases. And again, we are very, very excited to actually release these 101 policies, but at its, as it stands right now, 21 policies is what we believe in, in a five-year tenure. Uh, of a progressive empowerment party government that we can make real change with these policies. We've seen how it can work, how we can stop hem hemorrhaging within the economy in itself. Uh, that can also assist with funding with a lot of the programs that we're trying to put in place. And, and again... But you know campaigning is money. Of course. Right. So one of the first things that people have to do if they get into government, and, or when they get into government, is to change the whole camp way of campaign of finance. Of course, there is now, major if, reform going to be taking place where yeah, that but, is concerned. But are you, really, are, you really, are you ready to run the risk of being isolated? Because these people who pumps money into political institutions... We can't be in fear. We are not in fear. This is something that has to happen. We have to stand our ground and we must make this a reality. Win, lose or draw. The point of the matter is that we need to educate the population with certain pieces of information that they have been stifled for, for the, for, for the existence of our independence, man. And at the end of the day, this, is, this has been the tool that, that all political parties thus far have used to their advantage in stifling information towards the population. And again, it's a propaganda machinery as, as far as I say it. Um, where PEP is concerned, truly, our propaganda is truth. That's where our propaganda lies. We want to give the population truth. We but want you know, to truth give them can be biased. Eh? Ah, no, you know, not truth, at all. You know, truth don't have no biases in there. Listen, truth right, so, is and, truth, and truth is eternal. And in eh? some cases, right. that yeah. truth may even turn around and hurt us or hurt individuals in certain ways. But the point is, is that we must stand the ground in speaking truth. The people must know the reality in which they live in. They must know the position of where we are and what is necessary in order for us to get where we would like to go. So therefore, where you start in this, this, this education and progress? It started okay. already. The inception at, at of, of the Progressive Empowerment Party at on a national level. level. Because uh, you see a national level, but... The, let me tell you, but, the mainstream but media... But you have to add... let's just hear what Anthony has media. to say no, now. but wait a minute, I just have to tell this. Mainstream media have been doing everything in their power because we know... Exactly. Because of the information that's being put into the public space. Okay. Now, we have taken it upon ourselves, even though mainstream media is doing this, we've created our own media house. We have uh, uh, is fortunate to have uh, entities such as PSA Media and other small bodies around, mm -hmm. as well as us taking an initiative in going on the ground, meeting people, <coughs> door to door, person to person. Yes, it's going to take a long time. Yes, it's a, it's a huge effort, but the point is, is that we can't sit and twiddle our thumbs about this. We must put our money where our mouth is. We must take the first step and stand our ground. 
we have done this way too long and again we've said it earlier in the show there are a handful of people in Trinidad and Tobago's history that has been very outspoken that has really wanted to take that extra step in bringing or usher in a level of change but again the resistance that they have gotten from many many quarters around around them um, you said just now, uh, you know, us get, getting into office, the corporate uh, sector, they can be ones to give us a pushback and so on. The point is, is that these are things that we are aware of. Mm -hmm. These are things that we have scrutinized day and night. It's not us coming with a piece of paper and say, all right, 21 policies and yes, man, you just follow this, vote for us and we'll make this happen. No, it's not that clean cut and we understand this. It's a long, hard road ahead of us. And the point of the matter is, is a lot of tools that's going to be stepped upon. But you know, you know, you know to, to even effect that change and to be able to, to get in the heads and the mindset of the population, especially those that, like myself, who are PNM, mm -hmm. right? PNM till the dead. How are you going to get us to change the mindset to, to, to buy into the product of pets? Proof. Proof, realness. I think, I think you got it. There you got your, you Actually, got putting point. what we are seeing to practice. We are standing. Hold on. We are standing right now. We've we've seen our own citizens that is on the wrong, the, the, the bottom rung of society, going on the side of the road, trying to ply their trade, trying to make a hustle. But yet you have a corporate body such as Kiss across the road, and police can come and remove our citizens, charge them, seize their product. Yet you have Kiss still. Applying their trade across the road, no infringement, they are just happy-go-lucky. All around the country, 41 constituencies, many different areas are across the board. Now my question is, you have the law. Where does the law draw the line? Why does the law draw the line where the corporate sector is concerned Brilliant. versus the regular man on the Brilliant. road? And I must shake your hand. Brilliant question. And I saw the interview when Philip asked Gary that question. And he skilled around it. And there's where you call now, where the corporate citizen is calling the shot in the society. So this is, these are some of the, because I, I always ask myself, why is KISS giving a pass? And, and the regular man has, the to, regular suffer. Man has yes. to suffer. Mm -hmm. yes. Not only give him a pass. In the city of San Fernando, the mayor there mm -hmm. is trying to restructure the city to encourage vending. So he's doing some things to you have create people. designated zones, zones where you can have yeah, people So he's come creating and designated zones, but they have to pay $500. Mm -hmm. As a, as a Monty run, mm. so, so for the upkeep and all of these things. But yet, right over the road on the pavement, Kiss has his bread thing and they pay nothing. That's right. And they, the, the doubles vendor, the people who selling fruits and vegetables and some who selling some clothing and so on, they have to pay $500 for their space. Right? And Kiss is given a pass. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I agree with what you are saying here. I support some of your policies, yes. But I'm also questioning some. Well, but if you I'm are not ready, I'm not ready. <laughs> and let me be, be frank. Gassi, I wanted to ask you another I'm question. I'm not ready to leave the PNM <laughs> to come across that <laughs> I've invested. I've invested too much into the PNM. Gassi, I wanted to, to ask you another question. Uh. I've seen um, <coughs> in for the budget, right? For the budget, mm -hmm. we seen that mm -hmm. females were given shelters and stuff. Men were neglected. I looked at a video that Philip Alexander did where he walked into Port of Spain, a lot of, I think there's a car park that house some people, right? Homeless. The homeless. 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 Yeah. What do you think uh, our prime minister should do, should put in place for these people? Well, I, want, I don't want to focus on what the prime minister should do. What we as a society are supposed to do, because the, these, these people, they are, are children. They have parents. Some of them have children too. And, and why it is they have been left to wander around like that? What, how, what generally our, our society has done? What has our social development structure mm -hmm. has done to help improve the lives and rehabilitate these people? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, and I'm going to say this again. There is a hustle out there. You know? These people are being fed every day. Right. There are organizations that have been paid by the Ministry of Social Development so that these people could be fed. Debt is being, they keep these people in these conditions because people are making money off of it. Let's not hide from it. We got to know that by sitting in Woodford Square. Mm -hmm. We got to know that by sitting in Woodford Square, waiting every five o'clock. Now, we don't know sandwich, eh? but we're waiting for sandwich and juice. And in sandwich and juice, they used to give you a little brown envelope at $10. 
And they'd have rules to get a little pack of cigarettes. So one day, a guy by the name of Horace Watts, and another guy by the name of, uh, let's call him Millionaire, decided to do an investigation, mm. only to discover that these organizations, certain NGOs, makes lots of money because of these people on the streets. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are happy to have these people on the streets because it fills their pockets. But that's something that's happening across the board though. It's not just in that sector. I mean, perfect, perfect mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. You would find, uh, for example, uh, uh, within our prison si uh, uh, system, uh, you have amalgamated justice, on, justice on time. Right? And, and at the end of the day, we're talking about our budget being the way it is. We're trying to stop hemorrhaging. We want to uh, uh, have more funding towards different programs and so on. But you're talking over, is, is what, 100, uh, how much, 90 million or whatever the case is? Yeah, but, but $120 million a year. I want to ask you, this Mr. Defoe, my good friend, I call your brother from Right, from different political models. <laughs> I, I want to ask He's becoming a pep fan. Yes. How, how, are you, how, how, how are you going to change? How are you going to get to stop Mr. Hardy and them amalgamated from this $120 million? How are we going to stop your Billy, the <laughs> quarters, your Billy quarters outside EG? Simple thing. You're talking about a $2 million cost factor that to, to fabricate a, a courthouse. You're going to be moving one magistrate back and forth. You're not going to be moving a, 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 a prison body. And that's the difference. Putting the citizens at risk, causing traffic on the road. There's a host of things that's associated to that mm -hmm. in itself. Whereas one magistrate having to move from his home to the jail where his courtroom is positioned outside the jail or just a stone throw away from the jail. The point is it's a matter of efficiency. We have leaders in this place who call themselves leaders, man. Nobody could think about that. No one can make that a number one agenda in making a reality for Trinidad and Tobagoians. So this way we don't have that to be attached to our budget mm -hmm. for the next fiscal year. I just want to put a little pin in it there because persons are asking to calling on the show. I don't know how you all feel about that. But the like show, about, the show is about to wrap up, <laughs> so we, we're not really going to take some calls because callers don't have reason to, don't have reason to know one that when you know one caller called be short because you're getting the next caller. Okay. Maybe on the next occasion we could think like that. But the comments that are coming from the your listeners mm -hmm. and your viewers mm -hmm. are very valid comments. Right. All right, and it must be taken into consideration because at the end of the day, these are the people we're voting for. Right. Even mm -hmm. though I am not in government holding a position in government. I am a political activist for a particular uh, political organization that mm -hmm. is presently in government. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when I go out there, I have to be able to understand how these people is feeling and relay that back to my organization. Could we just take probably one call? It's a yeah, female I'm person. I'm going to um, take a call from Akila Bermudez. So we're going to pause to a short break <laughs> and come right back to the program with a phone call from Ms. Bermudez. Good morning, TNT, and welcome back to PSA TV. I'm Avalon Williams. This is Questions with Avalon. We have on the phone with us this morning, she's been sending in a lot of comments for this morning's panel discussion. Akila Bermudez, good morning. How are you? Hi, hello, good morning. Nice to be on the show. It's a pleasure to have so, you. I just have one question to post to Mr. Gas here this morning because he's been asking all the questions so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just want to say that nobody controls the Progressive Empowerment Party. Nobody. We have no 1% system or oligarchy or anything like that, right? So in supporting the Progressive Empowerment Party, what you see is what you get in reference to our plans and policies. Plans and policies so good that PNM and, and UNC are stealing it. So... Mr. Garcia, right? Uh, why is it that you support a political party uh, that's controlled and operated by people that you are afraid to meet? That is my question this morning. Thank you so much, Akita. I hope he's going to give you a good response after the I'm not, definitely I'm not going to Thank respond to that question. Because <laughs> it may be totally nonsensical to me to answer that question. Okay. Okay, because if you are asking me a question about a political institution, how do you know that it's control about that it is being controlled by other people? How do you know that? How do you arrive at that? Where's the evidence that you give me so that I have to answer that? Mm -hmm. So you just want me to answer a question in the box? No, that's an ambiguous question. I will answer that. Okay. Mm. 
Mr. Anisa, do you have anything to say before we end this morning's yeah. show? Yeah, well, well, I mean, you know, uh, again, um, my commitment is to Trinidad and Tobago. And I think I have a responsibility to leave a better Trinidad for my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. And in that context, I have determined that I'll continue to speak out in the context of how I see things. I'm not saying I am omnipotent. I'm not saying I am all powerful, but democracy demands all right, that we do that. And, and I'm saying that, you know, we must create a new hygiene in politics. We must create a new ethics in politics. We must create what I want to call um, the truth. And politicians must understand that when the rain falls, you don't fall on one house. I want them to remember that. And therefore, the issues that is happening in our country, our beloved country, is a responsibility for all of us. And we should take all the blames. I'm not going to only blame the politicians. But in so admitting, I am saying that we need to now have that cultural transformation that speaks to building a new society, that speaks to building a new um, citizenry, that speaks to putting Trinidad and Tobago first and not the mighty dollar. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Anthony Defoe. Well, in closing, um, it was a very uh, interesting discussion here this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would say, though, to Trinidad and Tobago, um, again, I have also voted other parties in my past, and uh, I have seen a level of light uh, where the Progressive Empowerment Party is concerned. Um, th there is 21 policies that we've put into the public space, and uh, we do believe very, very strongly uh, that they will bring a level of change for all of our citizens here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, given a chance. Uh, that's what we're brokering for. And at the end of the day, really and truly, uh, is about betterment. We have talked this talk for too long and, uh, you know, we've been in the bars, we've been in the backyard, on the gallery, talking to family members, friends and foes. And uh, it's, it's all the same thing, where we are in the same position today and there is no true betterment for our people. Um, in fact, our people are trying to get off the shores of Trinidad and Tobago. What we are proposing here at the Progressive Empowerment Party is a level of common sense programs and policies that actually work and can bring the power back to the people. Where again, our public servants are exactly that. They are working for us. They are working to bring betterment for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So for any political uh, entity to come into a public space and, and present themselves Again, we are supposed to be 11 times better than we was from day one because we've had 11 administrations and it should have been each administration trying to do, outdo the other uh, in bringing that level of bet betterment to our citizens as a whole, not just your supporters, but as 100% of your citizens, voters and non-voters of your cause, um, because that's what your job is there for, uh, is what we strive on. And again, to Mr. Garcia, um, I know there's a few policies you don't understand fully, but I open my doors to you uh, for you to, I'm not saying for you to come and vote the Progressive Empowerment Party, all I'm saying is to empower yourself with more information. That's what we're trying to put for our citizens. And uh, it's just, I, I, I give you a personal invitation to come down to 19 Stanmore Avenue, meet me on a Saturday, we can sit down, we can indicate, you can indicate to me what policies you're not sure of, and uh, we can actually try to explain that in layman terms as best as possible for you to understand and see where you and your family can actually benefit from these policies. And, uh, and that's where I would leave it and I would extend that to all of Trinidad and Tobago again. Um, it's about betterment, it's about having a level of hope and opportunity and that's what the Progressive Empowerment Party stands for. Thank you so much, Cassie. Um, Mr. Defoe. Mr. Barry Garcia, in your closing comment. Well, I enjoyed this session very much. Um, I hope that we could have, and I think the mainstream media should take a page out of your book, mm -hmm. where we could have open and frank discussions for the, bet the right. betterment of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. Regardless of your political affiliation, I enjoy the company of Mr. Defoe, my comrade brother, and he said. Mm -hmm. And I think this augurs well for moving Trinidad and Tobago forward. I said, as I said in the past, 
There are good-minded people in the PNM. There are good-minded people in the, in the Congress of the People. There are good-minded people in the PEP. And there are good-minded people within the trade union movement. And I think if we all sit down and collate our ideas together, we could push Trinidad and Tobago to be, to be the model of the world. Yes. And we have to start to think Trinidad and Tobago. We have to start to show, show that passion, compassionate, and love for Trinidad and Tobago. It must be about Trinidad and Tobago first. Mm -hmm. And everything will fall in line after. Um, my advice to the PEP is that, yes, you want you are a new entity on the block, and you want to establish yourself. But use less vinegar, use a little more honey, <coughs> okay? And get people, and I, I would, um, would accept your invitation, your, your extended. Very and nice, I think, I, So that we could sit down and have a complete dialogue and, ex and an exchange of ideas, because this is just not because I'm a PNM, I'm not willing to listen to you. Right. No, I don't operate so. Um, if I operate that way, then I will have been doing a disservice to Mr. Patrick Augustus moving man. And he had an open door to everybody to Trinidad and Tobago. Come with your ideas. You could even tell him inside in front of your face you're talking nonsense. You could tell him, boy, why you want to kill me? You understand? Michael could tell you that. He was that type. So I'm receptive to, to invitation. The only thing, and I've seen it here, and I've seen it publicly, the only political institution I wouldn't have no conversation with right now is the UNC. Mm -hmm. They're not about the country. They're about destroying the country by building themselves only. So I wouldn't have much conversation with them. I would listen to the PEP because the PEP is new, it is fresh, and I think it means well. So let me hear what you have to say, what you bring to the table. Okay? I would listen to Carolyn from the COP mm -hmm. because she's also fresh. Not that she spent time, but she's also coming with fresh ideas. So let's all meet. You could listen to the PNM too. I am open to critical assessment of the PNM. But be mindful that you can't tell me the PNM never did nothing. Yes, they could have done more. Yes, they should have done more. And let's work from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming this morning and joining on this panel. I mean, we're leaving on good terms this morning. So we have come to the end of today's show. Questions with Avalon. I want to thank Mr. Michael Anisad, the Deputy Leader of PEP, Mr. Anthony Defoe, and also Mr. Barry Garcia. Thank you so much. And these things are good at the end of the program. So on behalf of PSA and the whole entire team here, do have a wonderful day. Tune in and stay tuned for more tomorrow.